All right, you nerds out there, I got another build video for you guys today. Today we'll be building a PBS 14, a classic. And to start, you'll need some tools. You'll need your PBS 14 assembly wrench, and you need this for your rear lens, your rear um, ocular outer ring. You need this tool for your internal objective uh, retaining ring. You'll need a couple Allen wrenches. This one is to screw in um, the screws for uh, your main housing to connect with your battery compartment. You'll need this tiny Allen wrench for your grub screws, which will secure the infinity focus stop ring on the outside. And I'll put all the tools that you'll need in the description as well. You will also need some dielectric grease and a tool to um, screw in your intensifier to retaining ring. And you'll also need a can of air. And I have some argon here to purge my unit. So I got the housing right here. And the thing about a PBS-14 housing is you have to be careful with the threads because the threads are very fine and it's extremely easy to cross thread. So you have to be very careful Make sure you index your rings correctly before you start screwing it in. And if you feel any resistance to stop, back it off and try again. And a couple other things you have to watch out for is when you are connecting the battery compartment to the main housing, you have to be careful about how much torque you apply to these screws. There's four screws. And if you over torque it, you will crack the battery housing at these posts right here. And you don't want to do that. So just be careful when you're screwing these in, just make sure it's snug and you'll be fine. All right, let's take this apart. Okay, I have this separated. And something to look out for it doesn't happen often, but every now and then you will get a battery compartment housing where these springs right here that connect to your intensifier tube will be pressed down of just a little too far. And what that will do is prevent these springs from making good contact with the intensifier tube, causing your tube to potentially flicker. So just something to watch out for. Just, just hold it up and make sure that these springs are parallel and not pressed down. Okay, another thing about the housing is you have the you have this ribbon cable right here which connects to the inside of your housing at these two posts right here. So you'll have to connect it. Uh, that's the first thing you do. And you have your illuminator up front right here and you have your on and off switch right here with the option of turning on an IR illuminator as well. And it takes a double A and there's a nice picture right here to make sure that you put it in the right way. Okay, so for the housing itself, uh, you have this center, center line pin right here that is to help you index and center your intensifier tube as you install it in. And so something to just keep in mind, um, when you put the intensifier tube in here, install the light pipe, and also screw in the retaining ring, you don't want to over torque it or it's going to uh, the intensifier tube, which should be sitting center to this, will actually like come out of place and like get uh, a little bit out of place. And what that can do is also cause the springs to not make good contact with the intensifier tube, causing the tube to potentially not turn off. Okay. All right, let's set that aside. All right, today we'll be assembling this with a Photonis 11769 type tool tube with your uh, pigtails, which will connect here. And let's open this up. All right, once inside, get some foam. And you have your tube right here. And they give you a nice little sticker so you can peel it off. And it comes with a cover. Actually, that's pretty nice. Because um, Elbit tool tubes, they don't come with a sticker. And they don't come with a cap. And also the pigtails are protected, which is nice. Okay. Set that aside. 
that aside for now. Okay, the first thing you want to do is give it a good dusting. So let's dust the housing and everything. Alright, dust is always going to be an enemy when you assemble your night vision. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is install my lens, my objective lens into the front of the housing. Okay, so what I like to do is apply some dielectric grease to the threads of the objective lens. Let's just help it. You don't need a lot, you just need a little bit. Screw it in. Perfect. All right, after you screw it in, you are going to lock it into place with the stop ring. I right, set your ring into these little tabs right here. Let's put it in place. Threads on. All right, it is locked into place. All right, the next thing you're going to do is install the intensifier tube. Okay, so I'm gonna give the tube a dusting too. Luckily, there shouldn't be any dust on here because there's a cap and a couple stickers in place. So that's pretty nice. So take the battery compartment, take the ribbon cables, and press these into place on these two pins. All right, perfect. Now let's take off the sticker and install the intensifier tube. All right, what we're going to do is feed in the cable first. And you see the center line index pin right here. There's a little notch in the intensifier tube. Just push it in. There you go. All right. Let's connect the pigtail to the board. Perfect. All right, let's close it up. And again, we're going to install the screws. Just be very careful to not over torque these because you will crack the housing. So it just needs to be hand tight and a little snug. That's it. All right, great. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is first install the ocular lens outer ring. So I'm gonna apply some grease to the threads just to help it a little bit. You don't need a lot. Okay. Okay, perfect. Okay, next we will install the light pipe. So if you can see in here, there's a little notch where the light pipe um, sits. 
the light pipe itself also has a little block notch so you can use that to line it up and you want to make sure it's seated so it won't move just press around it be careful to not touch the intensifier, the center of the intensifier too, because you don't want to like smudge it. Okay, it's all lined up. Next thing is we are going to install the retaining ring. Alright, and the next thing we're going to do after installing the retaining ring is just apply a little bit more grease on here and we are going to install the rear ocular lens. Make sure there's no dust. And we are going to thread it on. Turn it to the left first, let it index. And then it should go on pretty smoothly. Okay, so one final thing we have to do is to set the infinity focus stop frame, which is this outer ring right here. So what you have to do is when it's nighttime, look at the stars with the unit on focus on the star and just go once you're focused just go past it like maybe five degrees ten degrees just a little bit and once you're happy you know uh, focused on the stars and you've gone past that five to ten degrees move this ring up to that point where it stops and then there's a grub screw in here there's a grub screw in here right now and you take your tiny allen wrench that I mentioned earlier and you tighten it in place so that it doesn't move. Um, so yeah, I, I you know I just built this, so I haven't done that yet, and I need to re-verify it. It looks like this is a used housing, so it looks like the person who um, built this before set the ring um, already because there's a gap between the ring and the housing, so it's probably already done. Um, but I'm going to check again later tonight, but that's how you do it. Okay, um, that's really about it. Now I'll show you some footage of, you know, what the unit looks like when it's turned on. And there you have it. That's it. Okay, I forgot to show you guys one last thing, which is to purge the unit. So there's a purge screw right here. So you just take it off. Okay, after you take it off, I got this can of argon. And I like to like put it in here at an angle because the idea is that argon is a heavier gas so it displaces all the oxygen out so it should be pushing the air out of it as you introduce more argon into the system and I like to hold it for like three seconds so this is this isn't a true purge because a true purge you have to create a vacuum seal um, and you might have seen those uh, gadgets with the tube and the nitrogen tank uh, where you suck all the air out then introduce nitrogen into it but I don't have that kind of money so I'm going to just use this can and hope that it works so I like to just spray it in here for about three seconds and there's an o-ring right there make sure you don't lose that and you reinstall the screw. And we're all good.